Are we live? Yes, we're live. Okay, I'm in my shop at Dennis' studio here in Bozeman. SVT3 Pro. I've been through it with this thing. I initially made some notes there to warn people. I thought I was going to have to leave a pot in there that was defective, but it turns out the pot is not defective. We had some interconnect pins that were bad on that interconnect. Pin 4 in particular, I think, was causing the... Well, I measured that it was not getting to the dirty ground uh, through the pot. I was getting high impedance there above 1 meg. Now it's all 850k and on down when you measure from the test point over here on the, uh, resist, uh, the bottom of the resistor that goes directly to that, the 27k, the top of the resistor. Anyway, working on two different amps at once here, I don't want to get mixed up, but uh, <laughs> I did initially when I thought that we had a factory defect and I was, because I was seeing 300 volts all the time as I was turning the pot down and I'm thinking, well, 300 volts through that impedance, but the reason it was there was because the ground was lifting. I still don't know why it gave uh, a sudden drop. The output would show a sudden drop. Let's see, let's flip it on here and I'll show you the signal. And. Um, show you how it's still deficient. I thought surely it's deficient because it's just over voltaging that unorthodox wiring they do of uh, the 12AU7 and it actually is not. That is what it's designed to do. In the documentation it says 120 volts for point TP7. That is not what you get at TP7 if you're set anywhere but at 20% or something on your control for the tube gain which is actually plate voltage. That tube gain is plate voltage and um, yeah, you t it takes some figuring on this one because the documentation doesn't match the panel on things like that and uh, the miscommunication uh, about what TP7 should be was a bit, I thought that was probably the maximum voltage there, 120 volt it says. So anyway, we uh, got waylaid for a lot of time and I got told to F off by the customer service at the Ampeg desk instead of giving me to someone who uh, could help me resolve the situation. So what do we got here? Let's see, as it warms up, it's all of there on signal right. Let me show you the scope out. Let's see, do we have anything coming out? Why don't we have anything coming out? I'm arcing it. I've left it plugged in. The amp is on. Everything's plugged into the dummy load over there. I'm using just that half, upper half of the 8 ohm 400 watt dummy load. Hand wired dummy load there made out of 20 ohm 10 watt resistors, I think. Or something. What is it? Yeah, parallel 10 ohm. 10 watt, 20, 10 ohm, 20 watt, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so why am I not getting any signal now? Got that turned up. That's turned up. That's turned up. Everything's up with the sign generator, possibly. Not getting anything. Uh, gonna have to put a supplementary video up. Anyway, the sine wave, just in short, believe me, it goes up to almost 60 volts and it's breaking up at the 12AU7. That's the bottom line. It has the headroom on the rails to get up to the 66 volts required to make a 275 watt RMS output, as it says it should have. There, I assume that's RMS. They haven't started using cheesy consumer audio wattage, have they? I don't think so. Uh, and with those outputs, come on, it's got to be 275 with eight big outputs there, right? And eight ohms. Anyway, 
whatever the case, if anybody has been able to scope this thing, let me know. And uh, let me know if I'm chasing a ghost here. If it's only supposed to put out 200 watts, then so be it. All right.